Today, guys, we have something that I honestly couldn't wait for. So much so that I set up my lights in an extremely quick fashion. Uh, didn't really change all that much. Didn't shave, didn't prep. No, I am so excited for this that I got everything set up as fast as I possibly could because this is something that I have been waiting for for a very long time. A year since it's been announced and much longer before that. Today, we're finally unboxing and using my dream GPU. That's right, today I have an AMD RX 6800 XT, a flagship GPU from AMD that actually at times can even beat a 3080. So let's get right into it. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie and you, you're watching Greater Than Pi. For those of you who haven't watched my Descent into the Madness, as I have waited for something like this, I had been talking about big Navi. Navi 21, I think it was what it was, or uh, 28. It was something specifically that I have been looking forward to for a very long time. I had the Vega 64, I had a 5700 XT, and AMD hadn't quite released a true flagship in a very long time. If I wanted anything better than my 5700 XT, I would have had to have bought a NVIDIA 2080. And at the time, those were just absolutely unreasonable. This is still a very expensive card. In fact, this is easily the most expensive unboxing that we're gonna be doing on this channel. But at the same time, this is an AMD card that is actually designed to beat NVIDIA at, at least rasterized performance. So what card do we have today? Well, we actually have the MSI Gaming Trio version of the 6800 XT. This one is fairly interesting because from what I saw at the pictures, it looks like it actually has three eight pin connectors, which is unusual for this GPU. It also has a three fan design, tons of RGB, and that typical MSI flair that we're used to at this point. On the box, it has pretty much all of the same stuff that you'd expect on pretty much all of these GPUs. Uh, 4K, all of them can do 4K, but I'm more interested in the 1440p performance, 16 gigabytes of memory, which is great for VR, and PCIe 4.0. On the back, we've got copper heat pipes, MSI center, airflow control, Torx fan 4.0, and the Trifrozer uh, 2 version of the cooler. It also has lots of little information about the actual GPU itself, and I can see are three eight pin connectors right up there. So that's gonna be interesting. Uh, minimum of 750 watts. I have an 850 watt PSU in the system we're gonna be using. So I may wanna upgrade that at some point in the future. Uh, VR ready performance, premium, all that good stuff. All right, so let's actually open this up. I don't think I've unboxed a GPU on this channel yet. I've been meaning to do it. <laughs> I gotta give MSI credit. The box is pretty cool. And, oh, all right, pretty easy to open up. Slides right out. At the top, we've got a booklet of different things. No lucky figure, apparently. Darn. MSI peripherals and stuffs and stuffs, motherboards, it's just an ad. Uh, installation guide. Actually, the last time I opened up a GPU from them, they had this whole like comic. This time around, they do not have that. Does this come with a GPU support? Oh, I did not know that. So this does actually come with it. This is actually really cool. This is a comic version of how to install a graphics card. Uh, it also includes instructions on how to install MSI Afterburner, which is really cool. Um, I do really like this and I love that MSI does this. Oh my God, there she is though. The bracket. <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about a GPU coming with a support bracket, 
that kind of feels a little bit like, hey, we know there's a problem here, <laughs> but we're not gonna fix it. Instead, we're gonna just ship you a, uh, a solution. Um, it is custom designed, it looks like, for this GPU, which is a little nice. Got extra padding there. And then in here, Oh my God, that is heavy. Um, You can murder somebody with this graphics card. Good cooler on it then. Oh, yo, that, that heat sink looks, <laughs> this heat sink looks like a straight up like desktop CPU cooler heat sink. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna install it into my PC with the bracket, because we're gonna give this thing the best possible chance to be the best possible GPU it is. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm gonna get back to you guys with some uh, numbers from just how good this thing really is. It is like purpose built, this bracket. What the heck? That is crazy. All right, uh, so yeah, I'll be back with my first impressions of gaming with this thing, because uh, this it looks, I like it. I really like it. <laughs> Guys, I do not think I'm worthy of this GPU. This thing is an absolute beast. My case wasn't ready. <laughs> My case wasn't ready. My 5000D is not enough for this GPU. I, <laughs> uh, I have never felt more emasculated buy a graphics card, but my God, this thing is incredible. I mean, it's the size of my forearm. Yes, we're still talking about a GPU. I have a big forearm. Huh. Yeah, it would be about, no, it's a little bit smaller than my forearm. Boy, it is. This GPU is big, it's heavy, it's powerful, and it's power hungry. It got so hot that it actually heated up the chipset fan on my X570 motherboard and made it sound like the boot up sequence during normal gameplay, which it's not supposed to do because I have it set to semi-passive mode. Furthermore, it was so heavy that the GPU bracket that came with the GPU, the support bracket, is not installed anymore because I got a different one that will hold it up adequately. And I also threw an extra one in there just for extra RGB. Speaking of RGB, this GPU is beautiful. The RGB illumination on this GPU is just, it, it's great. Like MSI did a really good job. I really like how it looks. And with the extra RGB that I threw around it, it ends up looking like really, really good. It is addressable. And the cool thing is MSI actually made it so that their GPUs can be controlled by both IQ and Razer Synapse. And if you just enable the compatibility mode, it will take right over. Currently speaking, the GPU is being controlled by Razer Synapse which is why it's actually matched to my background because Wallpaper Engine uses G Razer Synapse, which is actually uh, a whole nother thing. Furthermore, performance on this thing is nuts. For example, Fantasy Star Online 2 actually performed well. When we're performing at 140 to 170 frames per second, depending on the area, I mean, it's the first time my high refresh rate monitor is actually the bottleneck in this situation, I could cap the frames to 140 and be pretty happy. My capture card can only do 120, so I, I can already cap out my capture card. Additionally, uh, it's 3D Mark score uh, absolutely demoralizes the 6700 XT with a score that borders on 20,000 for the GPU. That's just impressive. And then on top of it, on top of it, Borderlands 3 running at 144 to 120 frames per second. At badass settings, it runs at 120. At uh, ultra, it runs up to 170 frames per second. As you can see, performance on this thing is impressive. And we're gonna do a full benchmark of it a little bit later. This was more of just a taste of what this thing can do. But it is hot, it is heavy, and it is power hungry. Another issue with this card is that it takes three eight pin power connectors. I only have two extensions. So I have to buy 
another extension. Actually, I'm gonna be doing custom cables. Overall, this GPU is just beautiful. It's extremely powerful. It's, well, awesome. And with the ridiculously large amount of fans that I did add into the system, it's now under control. But it is something that you're gonna to wanna to consider if you are gonna put something this power hungry into your system. But does it live up to the expectations I had for it? The answer is yes. 100% yes, and then some. I haven't seen many of these games running this well. And I haven't run into a situation on my 1440p monitor where I could play games at a frame rate equal to its refresh rate that are some of my favorite games. And to see them this well rendered, this consistent is just amazing. So as I said, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this GPU a little bit later, but right now the actual install went well, it looks good and I love it. So yeah, I'm kind of glad that I waited, you know? But that's what we're getting in today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, consider giving me a like, maybe commenting, subscribing. I do content like this all the time. And uh, as mentioned, we're gonna be doing a deep dive into this GPU soon. And when we do that, we're actually gonna be doing Linux and Windows numbers, as long as my Linux version uh, is behaving itself. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you guys again. Uh, Wolfie, out.